Hi everyone, I'm back to read the next book that we're going to be reading with the American Girl series. And this one is called Meet Caroline. And um, she is new to me. I don't know much about her story, um, but we will find out together. This is what the back of the book says about her and her story. Caroline Abbott is doing what she loves most, sailing on Lake Ontario with Papa when her world turns upside down. A British officer boards their sloop, announces that Britain and America are at war and takes her father prisoner. As Papa is led away, Caroline promises him that she will stay strong and steady until he returns. She tries hard to keep her promise by helping Mama run the family's shipyard. Then the British attack her village and it looks as if the American side is in trouble. Can Caroline stay steady enough to help win the day? Okay, and this is our girl, Caroline. And let me turn around and we will find out about the characters in our book. Here they are. We have Papa. Caroline's father, a fine shipbuilder who owns Abbott Shipyard. Here's Mama, Caroline's mother, a firm but understanding woman. Here's Caroline, a daring girl who wants to be captain of her own ship one day. And Grandmother, Mama's widowed mother who makes her home with the Abbott family. Here's Lydia. Caroline's 11-year-old cousin and good friend who lives in Upper Canada. Here's Mrs. Shaw, a neighbor who sometimes finds fault with Caroline. Mr. Tate, the chief carpenter at, at Abbott's and a good friend of Caroline's family. Here is Seth, a young post walker who delivers mail to nearby farms and villages. Here's Hosea Barton, a skilled sailmaker at the Abbott's shipyard. Okay, so here is her family and the people in her world, and we will um, continue and find out. I did wanna say this page shows that Caroline Abbott is growing up in Sackett's Harbor, which is right up here on Lake Ontario. Just across the lake is the British colony of Upper Canada. So here is Upper Canada, and in Caroline's time, this was owned by the British, okay? And so anyway, that just gives you a little background about what it looked like for Caroline's world. Okay, chapter one is called A Fine Sloop. Caroline Abbott leaned over the rail and laughed with delight. Isn't this wonderful? She asked her cousin Lydia. Sailing on Lake Ontario was fun anytime, but being permitted to come aboard the sloop White Gull on its very first voyage was an extra special treat. It's marvelous, Lydia agreed. I'm glad that Oliver and your papa invited us. Caroline's father had built white gull for Oliver, Lydia's older brother. You're lucky to get com to, to get command of such a fine little sloop, Caroline told Oliver, who was steering the ship. White gull still belongs to your father, Oliver reminded her. It will take me some time to earn enough money to pay him back. His voice dropped. I just hope America doesn't decide to go to war with Great Britain before I can do so, he muttered. Let's not talk about that today, Lydia said impatiently. Caroline felt impatient too. She listened to adults arguing about whether America should declare war on Great Britain all her life. Caroline didn't want a war. She didn't even want to think about a war. The breeze whipped some strands of hair into Oliver's face. He paused to retie his hair behind his neck. It's been 30 years since America won its independence from Britain. Maybe President Madison can avoid fighting another war. Caroline wanted to change the conversation from war to a happier topic. 
Now that the sloop is finished, you can sail all around Lake Ontario. Oliver grinned. I'm looking forward to buying and selling goods along the lake shore. It's a fine way to earn a living. You can start by buying some embroidery silk for me, Caroline said. Oliver shook his head. Mistress Abbott, I will gladly haul sailcloth and tar to your father, for your father, and apples and potatoes for farmers. I will happily carry mail and take passengers whenever they wish to go. But surely you cannot expect me to shop for embroidery silk. Caroline smiled mischievous. I need something of a reddish brown, like cinnamon, but with more red. Lydia giggled as Oliver made a face. And then some lace, Caroline continued. Mama is helping me make a new dress for my 10th birthday. A bit of new lace would be perfect. Enough teasing, Oliver begged. I'm a merchant, not a lady's maid. Why do you think I'm teasing, Caroline asked. She held her head high, the way Lydia did when she was pretending to be a fancy lady. Lydia, who was almost 12, giggled even harder. Oliver, Papa called with a no-nonsense captain voice. Watch, what you, watch that you stay the course, and you girls remember to stay clear of the mainsail. We'll stay clear, Caroline promised. Really, Papa didn't need to remind her about every little thing. She'd been born on the shore of Lake Ontario, and she'd been sailing with him for, for a long time, for as long as she could remember. Papa was the finest shipbuilder on all the Great Lakes. And one day, what are you thinking about, Lydia asked. You have a dreamy look on your face. Caroline hesitated before bursting out with it. One day I'm going to ask Papa to build me a sloop. I'll be captain. It was her most precious wish, one she usually kept tucked away in her heart. Beneath her bonnet, Lydia's eyes went wild with surprise. You can't be captain of a ship. I shall be, Caroline insisted, after I finish learning to be a good sailor. Would you like to be on my crew? We'll sail all the way to China. China, Lydia squealed. Neither girl had traveled farther than back and forth across Lake Ontario. Yes, China, Caroline declared. We'll visit the markets there and bring back gifts for our families. Lydia shook her head. I don't think I want to go to China, she said. I want to get married and live in a fine house in Kingston and have six children, all girls. Well, then I will have to bring back lots of gifts, Caroline said. Dolls and fancy hair combs and pretty bowls for your daughter's oatmeal. And a silk shawl for me, Lydia asked. Yes, Caroline promised. Then she turned to look at Oliver. He stood at the back of the boat with his feet braced. He leaned into the tiller, a long wooden bar used to steer the ship. The breeze ruffled his hair and he looked over the lake. Caroline couldn't hold a little sigh. There was no finer feeling than being aboard a sloop on a fair day. Sailing made Carolyn feel as free as one of the gulls soaring over, overhead. She had tried not to envy Oliver while the men at Papa's shipyard built white gull. It had been difficult though. Sometimes envy sat in her chest like a cold, hard lump. The wind shifting, Papa called. Yes, sir, Oliver said. He edged the tiller over a little farther. The sails made satisfying snapping sounds as the heavy cloth caught in the breeze. Since the ship held no cargo today, it skimmed lightly over the waves. Caroline, what direction is the wind coming from? Papa asked. Caroline closed her eyes, trying to tune her senses to the day as Papa had taught her. She could smell the water and the faint twang of newly dried paint and the heavier scent of tar. She heard waves slapping at the ship's hull and familiar rattle of the lines that controlled the sails and the steady creaking of wooden timbers beneath her feet. And she felt the wind against her face. She opened her eyes. The wind's from the west, Papa, she called. He nodded. Caroline felt the lump of envy in her chest melt away. I can make Papa proud of me, she thought. 
If she kept learning all she could about sailing, perhaps one day he would build her a sloop of her very own. I feel as if we're flying, Lydia exclaimed. She leaned over the rail, watching the water rush by below. We might as well be on a flying carpet. Wild gull, white gull is certainly colorful enough to be taken for one, Papa grumbled. Caroline hid her smile. Papa liked to paint his ships a plain gray. And after discussions, though, Oliver had convinced Papa to paint the ship bright red, blue, red, and yellow. O Oliver wanted his future customers to recognize his ship easily, even from far away. Lydia straightened and tugged on the brim of her bonnet. It's, it is very bright today, she complained. I like it, Caroline, tipped her head back so that she could feel the June sunshine on her face. The winters in northern New York were long and cold, and Caroline didn't see what harm it did to enjoy the sunshine while they had it. Young ladies must protect their skin from the sun, Lydia said. Caroline sighed. Lydia sounded as prim as Mrs. Shaw, a neighbor who was fond of finding fault with Caroline. Lately, Lydia had started acting as if she wanted to be all grown up. Caroline wished Lydia would forget about fancy manners, at least for a little while. She reached inside the small knitted bag she'd carried on board. Look what I brought. She pulled out a small top made of wood and painted green. We can play with it on board. Lydia, oh, can we play with it on board? Lydia asked doubtfully. The girls had spent many hours practicing with it on land, perfecting their ability to make the top spin. We can try, Caroline said. Let's go up near the bow. That's the front, she added, remembering that Lydia didn't know ships as well as she did. And don't forget, always keep one hand on the rail for safety. After making their way forward, the girls sat down a short distance apart. Caroline paused, feeling the deck tilt back and forth beneath her. She tried to time her spin, aiming the top so that it would travel down the slope to Lydia. Got it, Lydia cried, snatching the top before it wobbled out of reach. Now let me try. With some practice, both girls were soon using the ship's movement to help send the top exactly where they wanted it to go. Caroline grinned when Lydia pushed her bonnet back to get a better view of the top spinning across the deck. Maybe Lydia wasn't quite ready to be all grown up after all. Papa interrupted Caroline's thoughts. Are you paying attention to the wind? He called to Oliver. You need to change the, mail, the mainsail. Yes, sir, Oliver answered. I'll do it. Caroline paused. She knew that sailors had to be aware every minute of the way the, ch the wind changes. The changing wind affects the sails. They used the wind to keep the ship heading where they wanted to go. Papa had decided that White Gull needed to change course. No more play for now, he told Lydia. Hang on and stay down. The girl squeezed against the rail, went out of the way. Papa stationed himself by the ropes that helped control the huge sail. Oliver began shouting commands that any sailor would understand. Prepare the jib, trim the sheet. He's trying to sound like your father, Lydia whispered. And one day, Caroline thought, I shall be the one giving those commands. Oliver pushed the tiller hard and let the mainsail begin to swing out over the water. The sloop shuddered as the wind hit the loose sail and Caroline instinct instinctively clenched the rail with both hands. The top slipped from her fingers. It skittered across the tilting deck. Oh, Caroline gasped as she reached to grab the toy. She felt the rail slip from the fingers of her other hand. Suddenly, she too was skidding across the slanting deck. Caroline, Papa bellowed. Oliver shouted a warning and Lydia screamed. Caroline was tumbling too fast to answer. Her hands burned as they scraped along the deck. She bounced against the wooden storage box and pain stabbed through her shoulder. Oh, I must stop, she thought frantically. If she got in Papa's way as he wrestled with the ropes, it could mean disaster for the ship. 
If she got tangled in the ropes, she could be seriously injured. And the heavy beam at the bottom of the sail, called the boom, was swinging across the deck with enough force to knock into the water anyone and anything in its way. Time seemed to slow as Caroline crashed and rolled across the deck. Finally, she bumped against the far side rail. She wrapped her arms around it and hung on to it with all of her strength as the sail swung out over the waves. It felt as to Caroline as if the wind would yank the sail from the mast altogether and maybe even overturn the ship. But Oliver had lean, learned well. He knew just how long to wait, just the right moment to move the tiller again. And after a lurch, the sloop settled politely on a better course. Caroline struggled to her feet, keeping one hand clenched on the rail. She felt banged and scraped and bruised all over. Are you all right? Lydia asked, hurrying to join her. Then Papa appeared and Lydia stepped back. Papa's face looked like a thundercloud. I'm all right, Caroline said in a small voice, and I'm sorry. What were you thinking, Papa demanded? You could have been knocked overboard or even killed if the sail had hit you. Haven't I taught you better? Yes, sir, Caroline said miserably, but it was an accident. I dropped my top and what? And I was afraid it might fall into the lake. So I tried to grab it and then Papa glared at the toy, which had come to rest innocently nearby. He snatched it up and stuffed it into his pocket. There is no room for such play on the deck of a ship. Yes, sir, Caroline said again, her lower lip trembling. I just thought, that is, you and Oliver had everything set and you must be alert every moment when you're on board a ship, Papa interrupted. It's not enough to sail to set sail once. Wind, winds shift constantly, and you must always be ready to adjust your course. Out here, everything can be lost in an instant. I understand, Caroline whispered. Papa shook his head. I don't believe you do. You're too flighty, Caroline. If you want to sail on the Great Lakes, you must stay steady, watchful every moment. Caroline's skin grew hot. Papa turned and made his way back to Oliver. Oliver gave him the tiller before joining the girls. Don't, be, don't feel sad, he told Caroline. His tone was kind. No harm was done. I've disappointed Papa, Caroline said. No, you frightened him, Oliver said. That's why he got angry. All that matters is that you didn't get hurt, Lydia added. Gracious, perhaps you should stop dreaming about a ship of your own. I won't, Caroline thought stubbornly, although her heart felt as heavy as an anchor. She'd have to work extra hard now to prove herself to Papa. Lydia tugged her bonnet forward again and gazed out over the water. They had almost crossed the lake. The roofs of Kingston in Upper Canada had come into clear view. Why doesn't your father just put in for Kingston now? You and I could visit the shops. He says we don't have time, Caroline said. We'll drop you off at the landing below your farm. Oliver cocked his head, sniffing the air. The wind's dying, he said. With all the commotion, Caroline hadn't noticed the shift in the weather. The sails had no wind to fill them made flapping sounds. The deck motion had gentled. She darted a look at her father, half hopeful and half fearful. Sometimes when the wind was no more than a soft breeze, he let her practice steering. He caught her glance. After a moment, his stern expression softened. He beckoned her with one hand and Caroline's heart rose. She hurried to join him at the tiller. Thank you, Papa, she said. She braced her feet, grasped the polished wooden tiller carefully, and leaned against it. Papa stepped close behind her, putting one strong calloused hand on the tiller for guidance and the other on her shoulder. Caroline inhaled his familiar pleasant scent of pipe tobacco and sunshine, 
mixed with faint traces of sawdust and turpentine from the shipyard. Ease her a bit. Ease her over a bit, Papa instructed. That's it. Caroline concentrated as hard as she could. She could feel the ship beneath her feet, responding to each adjustment. All too soon, however, the little stoop, sloop was barely moving. We're be calmed, Papa announced. No trouble though, the wind will, will come up again. Caroline glanced towards Kingston. They'd drawn near enough that she could easily make out the town's wood and stone buildings. Several ships bobbed in Kingston's harbor. Upper Canada was a British colony, just as New York had been years ago, before the United States won its independence. Papa stepped back to put both hands on Caroline's shoulders and turned her to face him. You made a mistake today, daughter. I know, and I'm very sorry. Her words seemed to tumble over each other in their eagerness. I'll do better, Papa, I promise. Very well then, Papa nodded. I can be a good sailor, Papa, Caroline said. She wanted so much to make him understand. I know I can. Would you, do you think you might build a ship for me one day? Now, Caroline, Papa brushed a stray curl back from her face with a gentle thumb. I know you love sailing as much as I do, but you're just a child and a girl as well. I mean, when I'm older, Caroline explained, I can be a good captain, even if I am a girl. Papa looked over the water. Finally, he said, I can't say yes or no today. I'd be a poor father indeed if I made a promise. I wasn't sure I'd keep. I didn't want to go into business with Oliver until he'd proven himself capable of it. And he's 10 years older than you. Do you understand? Caroline looked at her shoes, trying to hide her disappointment. She didn't want to understand. She wanted Papa to have confidence in her and to trust that one day she'd be ready. Papa lowered himself to the deck. Sit, he invited. Caroline patted the warm, the sun-warmed wood. Caroline settled down beside him, still struggling to bury her hurt feelings. Papa rum rummaged in his pocket and pulled two lengths of cord free. He handed one to Caroline. Have I ever shown you how to make a Flemish knot? Here, watch how I do it. Caroline leaned close, trying to follow along with her own cord as Papa wove the two ends of his cord together. No, over and under this way, Papa showed her again. I think I've got it, Caroline said after a moment. She tied another Flemish knot, this time on her own. There, keep practicing, Papa told her, tapping the cords. Sailors practice their knots so often that when they need to make one quickly, their hands remember how. Caroline began another Flemish knot, and by the time she'd made three in a row, Lydia and Oliver had joined them. Uncle John, Lydia asked, will you tell us a story? Papa began filling the bowl of his pipe with tobacco from a little pouch. Well, the first ship I built was a sloop not too different from this one. Try to imagine sailing 20 years ago. There, there weren't many towns around Lake Ontario then, so I worked on a big river east of here. After I met and married Caroline's mother, we worked together on the ship. Sometimes we just hauled freight, other times we carried passengers. We'd anchor up at night and there would be singing and even dancing under the stars. Oh, Caroline breathed. That must have been lovely, Papa smiled. It was a fine life. Sloop captains would pull up alongside each other to exchange news. A few times, well after dark, I saw glowing torches along the river shore. Indians used the torches as they speared fish at night. And... Uncle John, Oliver called sharply. Papa scrambled to his feet. Has the wind picked up? Caroline asked, although she could tell it had not. Not very much anyway. 
Then she heard a splash. It came from Kingston's side of the ship. She followed the others to the rail. Three long boats were coming straight toward the White Gull. Even from this distance, Caroline could see the British flag hanging limply over the boat. The men pulling on the oars wore blue and white uniforms. Each boat held about 20 men. Why are they working so hard to reach us, Caroline asked. Papa crossed his arms over his chest, frowning. Something's wrong, he muttered. I don't like this at all. Okay, and that is the end of chapter one. And next time we will read chapter two called Terrible News. And we will find out what happens next.